My daughter came to the hospital where I was staying at for a few days. I was falling asleep in my room when a nurse suddenly woke me up. Thinking something was wrong, I headed down to the waiting room, but then I saw my daughter, who was supposed to be at home. Even from a distance, I could see she was shivering with cold. I ran to her. She was shaking and looking very pale. What in the world are you doing here all alone, sweetheart? Don't tell me you walked all the way from home. The nurse gave her some warm milk and I waited until she calmed down and asked her, What's wrong with daddy? I was mortified to hear my daughter tell me everything she knew about the story. And she was teary-eyed all the while. This is the story of how poor parenting can have a huge impact on the image of parents for a child. And how my daughter helped me see the truth about my husband and act accordingly to punish him. My name is Hannah and I'm 38 years old. I used to be a government employee working at City Hall like my husband but I quit my job when I was pregnant. After the summer vacation of my child, who's now in the fifth grade of elementary school, I started working part-time as a cashier at a local supermarket three days a week. My husband's name is Chris, and he's two years older than me. He's a government employee and has risen quickly in the ranks for his age and is highly regarded within the government office as a person who can do a good job, no matter what kind of task you give him. Give him a difficult assignment or an aggressive customer or a hard wire malfunction, he was your guy. Not to say everyone took him for granted, he did his main job with only a couple of easy favors here and there, scattered throughout the week. Everyone respected him well. Chris and I met at work, where I was two years his junior and I admired him. My husband also became interested in me because of my adoration for him, and he eventually confessed he had feelings for me. A year later, we got married, and soon after that, we were blessed with a daughter. We named her Lydia, and she is now 10 years old. She is a complete mommy's girl and is still a bit spoiled by yours truly. There's a genuine reason why she's a mommy's girl, and it's because I was drooling over her as many parents do. I love her so much, but I know what boundaries to set. I say spoiled when I really mean I give her all the love and warmth she wants and needs. And this is because of the way her daddy raised her. He used to kick her out of the house and make her stand at the door as a form of discipline from an early age. And the reasons were often laughably trivial. Like she knocked over a cup of tea and spilled it everywhere or forgot to put away one of her toys. At first, I was surprised at the behavior of Chris's parenting and asked him why. But he acted as if he didn't mean any harm. He even told me. She deserves to be kicked out if she did something wrong. He didn't seem like the kind of person who would do something like that from the time we were dating until now, so I got worried and talked to my in-laws about it. Hannah, I'm so sorry. Wait, what? According to my in-laws, the reason Chris did this is because my father-in-law, Mr. Clementine, used to discipline his son in the same way when he was a child. He and his wife used to fight a lot about this way of parenting, and he admitted he actively tried to change his strategies. He also said he never thought about the possibility that what he had done would affect his granddaughter now, and he was very apologetic about it. I understood my husband's situation, but whatever the reason, I don't think what he's doing is good for our daughter. After we got home from my in-law's house, I had a talk with my husband, and he promised me that from now on he would never kick my daughter out of the house or make her stand outside again. I was reassured that everything was going to be okay. However, my thinking was extremely naive. For when I started working part-time, Chris's bad habits started to appear again. I noticed it on the day of the first snowfall in December, when I was changing in my locker after my shift at work. A fellow part-timer who was about to start hers came sprinting toward me at a very fast pace. She was breathless when she got to where I stood, and when I asked her what was the matter, she said that because she was on a bicycle, she only saw her for a moment. But when she passed by my house on her way to work, she saw Lydia standing outside all alone. I didn't think it was possible, but when I rushed home in a panic, I did indeed find her standing outside the front door just as she had said and the front door was locked, so she couldn't get back in herself. Sweetheart, why are you outside? Hey, Mommy, you're home. I hurriedly unlocked the door and went into the room with my daughter to find Chris sleeping in a heated room. What are you thinking? He jumped up, startled by my loud voice, and looked at me with an awkward expression on his face. What do you think you're doing, kicking Lydia out in this cold weather? It couldn't be helped, Hannah. I'm doing this for her sake, you know. What about this is for her sake, for crying out loud? What if she catches a cold, or worse, pneumonia? Shut up. Lydia did something she wasn't supposed to, and I disciplined her as should be. What the hell did Lydia do to deserve getting kicked out of the house in this forbidding weather? In any case, you promised you wouldn't kick her out again. I made no such promise. This is between me and Lydia, and I suggest you keep your nose out of it and don't tell me what to do. 
I don't feel too good. I need me some fresh air. Chris didn't come home that day. After he stormed out of the house, I talked to Lydia, and she told me that he had been kicking her out of the house whenever I wasn't around. She also told me that he had let her back inside just before I came home, and that he had even told her not to talk to me about any of the stuff he'd been doing to her, but that today just happened to be the day he had fallen asleep on the couch and quite forgot his daughter was outside. Then I came home and things transpired the way you just witnessed. Lydia also told me that she was kicked out for the most trivial of reasons. That day, she merely told her daddy that his clothes smelled really nice. How in the world was that something she wasn't supposed to do? We were teaching her that giving other people compliments can make someone feel better than one might think. Why? Chris himself gave a perfectly good example the previous week when we were at a friend's place for dinner by telling the man of the house he really likes his cologne. She literally just said the same thing, all with good intention, and she was punished for it. That was just plain stupid. Not only that, but whenever I went to work on his days off, he also said he had to go to work too, so he often left Lydia at home alone. Of course, I never asked him to work on his days off, and his job is not the kind of job that requires him to work on his days off. After this particular incident, I became afraid to leave my daughter alone with her father. His habit of kicking his daughter out of the house as a form of discipline has not gotten better. But on the contrary, it seems to have gotten worse. I quit my part-time job a few days later so that it would never happen again. I'll stay home now, Lydia, okay? I had sound reasons, but for some reason, Chris didn't like my course of action, and we argued again about the situation. Hannah, why did you quit your part-time job, huh? You never even confided in me about quitting. You just went and freaking did it. Because I can't leave Lydia here alone with you because of the discipline you give her. I won't allow my daughter to be left outside in the cold when you're indoors enjoying the warmth and comfort of home. We're talking about this again? Let me remind you that I'm the one who feeds you and the little brat with my money. Don't talk big to me when you can't even make enough to pay for your own freaking food. I beg your pardon, Mr. Clementine? You've been spending a lot of money lately because you're the section chief. Just the other day, you bought thousands of dollars worth of sneakers that have nothing to do with your work, but still claiming that it was important. To top it off, I've never seen you wear them. What does that have to do with being the section chief of City Hall, eh? Shut up. I'm free to spend my money however I want. I resent you telling me what to do with my money, you money-grubbing bitch. I don't think Chris had any idea whose fault it was that I quit my job. After repeated arguments, our marriage had completely cooled off and the thought of divorce began to cross my mind. Even so, since I quit my part-time job, Chris never kicked my daughter out of the house, and he started coming home late. So Lydia's time together with her father became increasingly sparse. On the rare occasions that she did interact with him, she seemed very comfortable and didn't seem to avoid him or dislike him in any discernible way. I hadn't been able to come to a decision about my future with Chris because I was usually like that. I tended to put off important decisions until they became crucial for my life. And this was a delicate matter, because I hadn't told Lydia about the possibility of divorcing her father, and I had no idea how she would react to such a drastic change in her life. But one day, the worst thing imaginable occurred. Lydia was at school that day, and I was going to the supermarket. As I was walking into the parking lot in front of the store, the sports bag of a passing cyclist snagged onto the shoulder strap of my handbag, and the sudden force sent me flying a couple of meters. I sprained my wrist, suffered a few scrapes, and hit my head against the ground, so I had to be hospitalized for examination. I didn't want to be away from home, given the concerns I had with Chris and Lydia, so I tried to refuse the hospitalization, but doctors insisted, so I had no choice but to be admitted. I was in the hospital for four or five days. When I reluctantly called Chris about my predicament, he actually did the kindest thing and left work early and brought me a change of clothes right away. And that's not all. He even brought me my favorite sweets. You stay in the hospital until you are completely healed, okay, honey? I was so worried when you called. You didn't sound too good. And from what you told me, your wrist was pretty messed up. But I'm glad it was just a mild sprain. It had been a long time since he had said such kind words to me. Thank you so much, honey. And about Lydia. I know. Don't worry. I'll take good care of her. And I promise you I won't do anything. Those words made me so happy that I almost cried and I felt like he was trying his best to take care of me, as if he was genuinely worried about me being in the hospital. Thanks to Chris, I no longer had any worries about being hospitalized. But I was naive to think so optimistically, and my fears up until that day were completely justified. The examinations had gone well, and all I had to do was wait for getting the thumbs up to be dismissed from the hospital. 
I was falling asleep in my room when a nurse suddenly came to wake me up. Thinking something was wrong, I followed the nurse, heading down the hallway to the waiting room, practically sleepwalking, wondering what was going on at this time of night. But then I saw my daughter, who was supposed to be at home. Even from a distance, I could see she was shivering with cold. I ran to her. She was shaking and looking very pale. Lydia, is that you? Mommy, help me, please. The nurse found her wandering in front of the entrance at night when she couldn't get into the hospital because it was past open hours. And she took her into protective custody. It would have taken an hour to get from our house to the hospital on a child's feet. The nurse gave Lydia a large mug of warm milk and after I waited for her to calm down, I asked her, what in the world are you doing here all alone, sweetheart? Don't tell me you walked all the way from home. What happened to your dad? Was everything okay at home? She started talking quietly. Mommy, he brought his friend home every day. His friend? Yeah, and she smelled really nice. She smelled just like his clothes. From what my daughter told me, it seems that while I was in the hospital, Chris was bringing a woman home every day, neglecting our daughter in the process by not feeding her properly, kicking her outside at the slightest disapproval, and generally depriving her of any necessities to protect her from the cold and darkness. Why did you come to the hospital tonight? I just felt lonely. He said that if I didn't go to sleep like a good girl, I could find somewhere else to be for the night. That's what I did. I know, honey, it was scary and cold, I know, but it's all right now. I felt an extreme tightness in my chest. I then realized that when I first informed Chris that I was going to be in the hospital for a while, his kindness wasn't because he was genuinely worried about me, but rather because he could actually bring home a woman whom he was cheating on me with. And he was just trying to deceive me into believing everything would be okay. I thought he was doing everything for me and Lydia, but I will never forgive him for the way he treated her and for his betrayal of me. Mommy, I don't want to go home. Daddy's scary. I hugged my daughter tightly, and that's when I noticed she was very hot and clearly had a fever. I didn't leave my daughter's side even for a moment until she fell asleep, and right after she went to bed, I called my in-laws. When I told them the gist of the general situation, they immediately rushed to the hospital. I asked Mrs. Clementine to stay in charge of my daughter, while in the meantime, Mr. Clementine would come home with me because I had just recovered from a few injuries. They were happy to oblige, of course, and Mr. Clementine drove me straight home. On the way, I couldn't stop thinking about my daughter, and I couldn't stop being furious at Chris for doing this. When we arrived at the house, Mr. Clementine and I entered quietly so that my husband and the adulterous woman wouldn't hear us. At the door were the woman's shoes, which were the sneakers that Chris had bought some time ago. The same ones that had cost thousands of dollars. He had bought all this stuff for a date with the cheating woman? This is getting more and more scandalous, I thought. I suppressed the boiling blood rushing to my head, opened the door to the bedroom where I knew they'd be, and sure enough, they were in the middle of having sex. What the frick is going on here? Before I could make a move, Mr. Clementine grabbed my husband by the chest, actually lifted him out of bed, and launched him into the air. Chris steadied himself against the bedroom desk, and he turned around with a look of horror on his face. d, -d dad what are you doing here? And you, Hannah? You're supposed to be in the hospital. He was completely flustered by the sudden turn of events. Hey, mind explaining to me what exactly has been going on lately? What do you mean explain? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. I was so getting frustrated as he mumbles on and on. Do you know where Lydia is right now? Where's Lydia? Why, she's sleeping, of course. Yes, she is sleeping. But do you know where exactly? Don't tell me you didn't even notice that she was gone. Listen, bucko, Lydia is in the hospital right now. She went there alone in the cold to ask me for help. Why did you freaking tell her to leave, damn it? Because, well... If you don't tell me in five seconds, I'll turn you into the police. Then Chris finally became reasonable and started to confess everything to me. Listen to me. She's the one who's been begging for you, saying, I want my mommy, I want my mommy, I want my mommy, blah. It was getting so freaking annoying. I told her to go to bed tonight, but she wouldn't listen to me. I'm under a lot of stress myself, you know. What the frick? I don't understand why you're stressed out. You just wanted to do this with this Miss Universe here tonight. So you put her to bed early. That's what you did. You're a failure as a father. No, I'm not. And you didn't freaking prepare her meals properly. What kind of nerve does a man have to leave his own daughter alone as he cheats on his wife and does the unspeakable with another woman? If you have a reasonable explanation as to why you freaking did that, well, speak up. I was so upset that he couldn't even conjure up the nerve to speak to me. Oh yeah, 
As for you there, I'll never forgive you either. The reason he was coming home late and working on holidays was so he could have an affair with you? That's really fricked up. I'm going to charge you alimony, so I suggest you prepare yourself. The cheating woman almost cried out of fear, but that was nothing compared to the horror my daughter had just experienced the night before. Chris and the adulterous woman are completely defeated and don't seem to want to say anything at all anymore, let alone argue. But Mr. Clementine and I were still furious. Don't you worry. I'll take this son of a bitch to the police station myself. Now wait a damn minute. I've already told you everything, now I should be innocent. That's not the freaking point. You need to realize what you've done. It's your freaking fault to begin with, Dad. You did the same things to me all those years ago, kicking me out of the house at the slightest mishap for hours on end. You are to blame for my poor parenting. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. All the more reason I have to educate you properly now. I'm sorry, Hannah. This is all my responsibility too. So I'll take this bastard into police custody. With that said, Chris was half-acidly taken away by his father. I then got rid of the adulterous woman, and Mr. Clementine and I were back at the hospital before my daughter woke up. Chris was officially investigated by the police, and Lydia and I were subjected to a number of interviews. Lydia seemed to be a little intimidated at first, but the police were very kind to her and made her feel like she was safe from her dad. He was convicted of extortion and child abandonment and sentenced to one year in prison. Considering what he did to our daughter, I thought it was too short a punishment, but I'm really glad that he was punished nevertheless. The woman whom he was having an affair with dumped him soon after, and his fate was that he was confronted by me with divorce papers and demands for alimony and child support. As for the alimony and child support, Mr. Clementine had voluntarily shouldered the burden of paying them because his son had spent a lot of money on the adulterous woman and he was serving a prison sentence. Mr. Clementine told me that he would make sure that my ex-husband would pay him back when he finished his sentence, so needless to say, Chris has quite the life waiting for him once he's out of prison. I also filed a claim for alimony against the adulterous woman through a lawyer. I heard that this woman was quite a gold digger, for she had been getting rich men to pay her tribute, and right when she was having an affair with Chris, she was unemployed and completely depended on him providing for her. There was no way she could pay alimony without a job, and no man would ever volunteer to pay the alimony for her. She's been going to numerous job hunting facilities for the past few weeks now, desperately looking for a job. I don't care about her life, but I just want her to pay the alimony as she promised. And as for me, as soon as I got back to the hospital, I apologized to the nurse for my selfish behavior. It was especially inappropriate because the date had changed as we were taking care of everything and it was my discharge day. The nurse did not scold me, but instead welcomed me warmly. I guess the nurse couldn't scold me because of the circumstances. After leaving the hospital, we returned to the house, but only to pack our belongings. Not long after that, my daughter and I moved into an apartment near the school. The house we had been living in was owned by Mr. Clementine, who sold it and rented the apartment to us. In addition, he arranged for me to get a full-time job at a company owned by a friend of his. My father-in-law said it was atonement for his sins, but... All I could do was thank him. He had been very helpful when I confronted his son for his actions, and he had helped me get back on my feet to support myself and Lydia. I mean, if that isn't a savior, I don't know what is. As for my daughter, she was a bit depressed at first after our divorce, but she's not too old to understand what my ex-husband did to her. She seems to be accepting reality in her own way nowadays, and before long, her mental state improved, and she's back to her normal self. She comes to my office on her way home from school every day now and is loved by the president with all the other employees, so she's doing pretty well, I think. When I see her smiling face, I truly feel that confronting her father was definitely the right thing to do. I'm sure that the future will be bright for my daughter as she grows up under the watchful eye of me and everyone I trust.